In the previous lecture, we solved three problems based on the calculation of average value of continuous time signals. In this lecture also, we will solve three problems based on the calculation of average value. So this is part two of the solved problems. This part is very important. This part is very important because we are including non-periodic signals and the examples or the questions taken here are a little bit tricky. We will try to understand few important tricks and concepts related to the average value calculation so that you can use them directly in the examinations. So let's begin with the solution of the first problem. Here signal is x60 and this is the waveform of the signal. Now if you remember the first lecture in which we discussed the average value, we took two examples. Out of that two example, one was based on non-periodic signals and the signal was x2t and it was equal to a naught ut. If you draw the waveform of a naught ut, you will find the waveform like this. This is origin t x 2 t and here we have a naught and when we calculated the average value of the signal it was equal to a naught by 2. Now if you compare the two waveforms you will find we have obtained this waveform by shifting the signal towards the right. So we have performed the time shifting and I can write signal x 6 t x 6 t as x 2 t minus 1 so we have obtained signal x60 by shifting signal x2t towards the right and signal x2t is having the average value equal to a naught by 2 and now let's see what is the average value of signal x6t and we already know the process to calculate the average value of non-periodic signals the signal is non-periodic because it is not having the repetition of particular structure infinite times However, the signal is extending from minus infinity to infinity and uh, if you see all the signals in signal and system subject, they extend from minus infinity to infinity. Some of them are periodic and some of them are non-periodic. The periodic ones have a particular structure repeating infinite times and it will repeat infinite times because the signal is extending from minus infinity to infinity. In the previous lecture, if you remember these two problems, we checked for periodicity and we found this structure is repeating from minus infinity to infinity therefore this particular structure is repeating infinite times in case of signal x40 and hence it is periodic. You can also check using the condition for periodicity xt plus minus and t0 this is the condition for periodicity according to this condition when you perform the left shift or the right shift by n t0 you will get the same signal and you will get the same signal only when the repetition of the particular structure is infinite times so that if you shift the signal by one period you will have the same signal there will be no change in the signal i have explained all these things in great detail while discussing the periodic and non-periodic signals this was a quick revision of the basic concept now we will calculate the average value of signal x60 and to calculate the average value of non-periodic signals we take minus t by 2 and t by 2 such that all the amplitude transitions are included. Here there is only one amplitude transition from 0 to a0 and it is included in this range minus t by 2 to t by 2. Now we will use the formula and we will calculate the average value. The formula is limit t tends to infinity 1 by t integration minus t by 2 to t by 2 integration of signal xt which is non-periodic with respect to t. Let's solve it quickly. Limit t tends to infinity 1 by t from minus t by 2 to 1 you can see the signal is equal to 0 from minus t by 2 to 1 signal is equal to 0 and from 1 to t by 2 signal is equal to a naught so from minus t by 2 to 1 signal is 0 and from 1 to t by 2 signal is a naught when you solve the integration you will have limit t tends to infinity 1 by t 
inside the bracket this will become 0 and from here we will get a naught t by 2 this t and this t will cancel out and as there is no t in the expression there is no need of limit t tends to infinity we cannot apply it so simply the answer is a naught by 2 this is the average value of signal x 6t and if you see the average value of signal x 2t then it is also equal to a naught by 2 so we can say that there is no effect of time shifting on the average value. I will write this very important point here. There is no effect of time shifting on the average value. Now let's solve the second problem. In the second problem we have a similar signal which is x70 and x70 we have obtained by time scaling of signal x60 this is the relation between x70 and x60 now let us try to find out the average value of signal x70 and for this again we will set the range and the range should have the amplitude transition all the amplitude transition there is only one amplitude transition so minus t by 2 to t by 2 the average is equal to limit t tends to infinity 1 by t inside the bracket from minus t by 2 to 0 0.5 or 1 by 2 signal is equal to 0 and from 0 0.5 to t by 2 signal is a naught a naught dt when you simplify this you will have limit t tends to infinity 1 by t inside the bracket a naught t by 2 t and t will cancel out and again we will have a naught by 2. So what we can say from this result? We can say that the time scaling is having no effect on the average value. So I will write this point quickly. No effect of time scaling on the average value. Now there is one homework problem for you. And in this homework problem, you need to tell me the average value for signal, let's say yt, which is equal to x7 minus t. So you need to tell me the average value of signal yt. And you can clearly see we have performed time reversal. So you need to tell me if time reversal is having any effect on the average value or not. This is homework for you. And now we will move to the last problem in this presentation and this problem is a good problem and using this problem we will summarize most of the things we have learned till now. So let's solve it. The problem says signal xt is having the average value equal to 8 and signal x8t is equal to 2 plus x2t plus 1 over 4. Now before solving this problem I want to explain one thing. If you are adding a number let's say k to a signal xt then the average value of the signal xt will also have k added to it so k plus average where average is the average value of signal xt and if you are multiplying a number k to signal xt then average of signal xt will also get multiplied by the same number k so you can remember this and we will use it in this problem. So let's try to find out the average value of signal x 8t. I will start, I will start with the time shifting x t plus 1 and as we have already seen in the first problem that there is no effect of time shifting on the average. So if signal x t is having the average equal to 8, signal x t plus 1 will also have the average equal to 8. Now I will perform the time scaling 2t plus 1 and we have seen in the second problem that the time scaling is having no effect on the average value. So the average value will remain same which is 8. Now what we will do? We will simplify this. Let's simplify this. 2 plus x 2t plus 1 over 4. I can write it as 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 x 2t plus 1. We know the average value of x2t plus 1, it is equal to 8. Now we will find out the average value of 1 by 4 x2t plus 1. So let's do it quickly. 
1 by 4 x 2 t plus 1 and you can use this result here to find out the answer x t in this case is equal to x 2 t plus 1 and the average is equal to 8 k is equal to 1 by 4 so we will multiply k which is 1 by 4 to the average so 1 by 4 multiplied to 8 which is equal to 2 so this is having the average value equal to 2 now we will add 1 by 2 to 1 by 4 x 2 t plus 1 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 x 2 t plus 1 and from this you can see when we add a constant k to signal the same constant is added to the average here signal is equal to 1 by 4 x 2 t plus 1 and the average of this signal is equal to 2 the k the constant we are adding is 1 by 2 so we will add 1 by 2 to the average which is 2 and this will give us 5 by 2 so 5 by 2 is the answer of the third problem the third problem is one important problem and I hope you now understand how to deal with the average calculation of signals which are non-periodic. I will end this lecture here and I want you to solve the homework problem given by me. Once you have your answer, post it in comment section.